Uh, I'm Yong Zhao from the University of Kansas. Well, I think the aim of education is to help uh, realize the potential of individual students, to help every student to become a fully functional, contributing member of uh, society and uh, to advance humanity. Well, personalized by education, I want the whole education system to enable every child to personalize it for themselves, to allow children to take charge of their own learning, to be the owners of their own learning. So education needs to be more personalizable, needs to be flexible, needs to allow children to take charge, to take ownership of learning. Well, in order to do it, you have to make sure education follows the child. You don't impose on children. So you have a different curriculum. You want the children to be able to determine what they would like to do, what they want to do, and how we support them. And uh, so they can determine what to learn, when to learn, how to learn. Sure, yeah, we got to change how we teach teachers. Teachers, you know, uh, not only have to deliver the knowledge, uh, help teach the skills, but more important, teachers have to help every child understand themselves so they are their personal coach. They know their strength, they know their passion, and they know why they want to learn certain things. Help them to advance their, themselves as uh, individual humans. Well, I think, you know, in, in, in this paradigm, you know, you cannot use standardized testing, you know, views. But you know, if so testing are useful if you are looking for certain type of people as certification. But in this way, assessment is valuable. You, uh, every individual students can know how they're advancing, where they're advancing, but that's how to do the assessment is important. It's authentic, it's personalizable, it is follows the child, it's not externally exposed, uh, uh, imposed, it is not in comparison to other people. Well, every student would be different. Everybody would have a different profile of learning, and that profile would uh, contain a portfolio of uh, evidence of learning, evidence of growth, evidence of abilities. Level, well, that's fine. You know, I think everybody, you know, the, every system works for somebody. And, but at the same time, we need to watch for those people who are not benefiting from the system. So my view of change is not to say, throw everything out, but instead we try to focus on certain parts that we can change to help those who are not benefiting from the system. Well, my, I'm critical of PISA because uh, first of all, PISA is conceptually flawed. It claims to measure 21st century skills. It doesn't. There's no empirical evidence to say PISA does it. And uh, it claims to say we measure skills essential for the future, but you know, it have not, has no evidence to say it actually measures that. Also over the past 20 years, PISA has done 20 years of testing. It hasn't shown the country scored better 20 years ago are doing better today economically. It hasn't shown that individuals who did better 20 years ago are doing better today. So that's one problem. Another problem is also every country, we have so many countries, so many cultures, each and every country may have different needs for different kind of people, different education outcomes. It's impossible to have the same outcome for all children in all economies, in all cultures. That's, that's the second problem. PISA is trying to impose one measure of education across such a diverse society. And third problem, of course, with, with PISA is that no education is only focused on three subjects or four subjects and only focus on the acquisition of knowledge. Test taken is different from real abilities and also it doesn't measure the other consequences as I talk about the side effects. And of course there are other technical issues too. Sampling, you know, uh, statistical modeling, there's many other issues as well. Uh, I wrote this, a lot about this in my article called The Illusion of Pisa. It has created a big illusion of Pisa. Yeah, well, you know, I, I grew up in China, went to Chinese schools, I, was, I taught in China. I also uh, uh, went to school in America, graduate school, I've been teaching in America, different countries. I think, you know, education has helped me uh, to, to think a lot more cross-culturally, a lot more globally, because now I'm much more aware of uh, 
different cultures, different people in different places have different views, different values, different needs. Because I come from a very tiny, small village in China. We just had electricity a few years ago. We went through cultural revolution. People starved to death in my village. You know, it's very hard. So I've been, education has really helped me to move from one little community to a broad global community, many communities. So I think it's very powerful uh, in uplifting. But the, again, that's kind of education I got from that and I hope to share with everybody else. It's been wonderful, it's been well taken care of. I think uh, the organizer committee are very careful in terms of curating the content, are very considerate and thoughtful, but the audience also very responsive, enthusiastic. The venue is absolutely fabulous, thank you. It's been a great experience.